once more with vigor. Stay down! One, two, shite! I... I lost count there. Oh, there! Oh! God, why have you forsaken me?
reinforcements. That spectre seen a corpse and it wants it for its own. Watch out! Spectre position! symbol. Someone's been here already. Looks like Helen found Mrs. Ingersoll's stash. Sugar, salt. Isn't this Nathaniel Sather's stolen merchandise? Yes, it is. The ledger for Ingersoll's store. Same dates, but with much higher figures. Two different ledgers, one of which was locked inside a chest. I think I understand. She stole her own merchandise and hid it in the mines. Then she hid the accounts that would expose her lie. Why would she do that? The store and Nathaniel are all she has. She doesn't want to lose them. 
and Nathaniel can't leave for Boston without his money. Nathaniel broke his promise and doesn't regret it. Skint, he betrayed Mrs. Ingersoll for a couple of Helen Priest's coins. We should go back to him. Excuse me. Mrs. Ingersoll, that you? I think so, Mr. McGrath. I think so. I don't blame you for being disconcerted, Mrs. Ingersoll. I'm sorry, do I know you? You don't. But you should. Bathsheba Ingersoll meet Antea Duarte, the Banisher. We found some merchandise stashed away. Oil, sugar, some, uh, spoons. We suspect it was stolen. Is it yours? I believe it is. Or at least it was. Helen Priest lays claim to it. For the company. And how does Helen Priest know about it? Because Nathaniel told her. He broke my confidence. He broke my heart. For the sake of his return to Boston and a life of ease, he'll trample the legacy of those who made him. He betrayed us. I knew what he was up to. That is why I ran. And because I ran, I died. What are you doing here? You came to my store. Then you've met Nathaniel. Would you give him a message from me? Tell him he must stay. He made a promise he must honor it. So, you haunt Nathaniel. But he told us you stole your own cash box. Why? Priest took my stock. All I had left was the money. I thought I'd start again somewhere else. Boston. Where it all began. This isn't what you had in mind, eh? I have business yet. You'll see. I'll ask you some questions, if you don't mind. What are you to Nathaniel? Where did you meet? One day, an orphan boy came to our store in Boston, hoping to learn the trade. He had this idea that he would sell hats. Everyone needs hats, he'd say. We gave him a job. He's been with us ever since. He's my barker, my salesman. He's born to it. He writes well, too. You should read the letters he sends to his friend, Thomas, in Boston. Tell me more about Thomas. He and Nathaniel are very close. Natty writes at least once a month. Were you married, Mr. Stuarte? There was a time when I would have judged you if you were not. Now I know better. Love is love. Whichever way it comes to you. Natty loves Thomas as well as any man ever loved a woman. Maybe better. What do you think of that? Love is love, as you say. Whichever way it comes to you. And there'll never be too much love in the world. Where are you from? Boston, originally. Now I'm from New Eden. You? Cuba, originally. Now I'm from everywhere and nowhere. Was it in Boston where you met your husband? It was. I uh, went into his shop one day and there he was. <clears throat> and you? Did uh, you meet Mr. McCraith in Cuba? God, no. We met in London, 
We met through work. Yes. It happens. Or so I've heard. We'll be off then. We'll be in touch. Then I'll await your return. Or not. May we talk, Mr. Sather? I'd like nothing more. How can I be of service? We must talk about the widow's accounts. They're meager enough. You surprise me, sir. And by that I mean you do not surprise me in the least. <laughs> if the coffer was full, I'd be halfway to Boston by now. Is that why you're selling your stock cheap? Everything must go, sir. Or I'll not carry this junk back to Boston and the coin will pay my way. Bathsheba kept the money she owes you. And now you're stuck here. Boston no more than a memory. That's it, exactly. Now you understand the urgency. I've bad news for you. I found Bathsheba's body. The wolf's got her. Oh no. Poor Widow Ingersoll. I so dearly wish she'd made it safely to Boston. Did you find the cash box? I found something else. A note. You told priests exactly where to find the merchandise that Mrs. Ingersoll had hidden in the mines. Ah. Now, I have a number of excuses, but I get the feeling you won't be interested in any of them. Nor, to be honest, am I. I did the right thing. I followed Bathsheba to her hiding place, and then I told Mrs. Priest where to find it. The stock will keep people alive. Now is no time for commerce. You lied to your employer. Did she deserve it? Listen. Bathsheba no longer knew what she was doing. She lived in the past, while we live in the present, and the future comes charging towards us. She wallows in grief, to the detriment of her friends and neighbours. She wouldn't give up the goods. So I gave them up for her. All right. It's time. I hear you, Mr. Sather. But I'd like to hear Widow Ingersoll's thoughts on the matter, too. Wouldn't you? Dear Lord, what are you? Worry not, Nathaniel. This is the ghost that haunts the store. Bathsheba Ingersoll. Back to tell me one more time that you're not going to pay me. That money is my husband's legacy, and I shall decide what's to be done with it. The money is mine. I earned it. All those years, I stood by my promise. But you did not. You lied about the books. You cheated me. I? A cheat? You swore to my husband on his deathbed that the store would go on. You swore an oath to a dying man, and then you broke it. I swore to help you with your grief. To keep running the store while you mourned. But you did not mourn. Instead, you poured your heart into his business. You won't let it go. You won't let him go. I can give you no more time. I have a life to live. Your dead husband does not. Must let me go. By renouncing his business, you bury my husband a second time. Ingersoll's name will die because of you. It's time to end this. Nathaniel Sather, you broke a promise to a dying man. The man who gave you everything. It brought the angry ghost of his widow back to haunt you. What's this? What are you doing? Someone has to pay the piper. 
May as well be you. Is this a treasure map? It's badly faded, but I see a word. Curse. A cursed treasure map. Or at least a map to cursed treasure. A map which we will, of course, be following. Well, I do love a treasure hunt. Spectral traces. Something's up with Helen. Banishes. Excuse the clatter. I've seen worse. Good day to you, Helen. I did not count on seeing you two again. I take it you've returned for a reason? Things have been feverish round here, to say the least. Are you bearing up? As well as can be expected. How well is that exactly? People are barely scratching by up here in this godforsaken fort, dangling out over the edge of the world. I fight, so the stockade stays standing. The ship is wrecking, but I was called to be captain. I hold the wheel. So yes, Banisher, I am bearing up as well as can be expected. A presence yet surrounds you. It could explain why you feel so burdened. I carry my grief with me. I live with a family that is no longer here. You made sure of that. Could his husk still be present? It will be drawn to you. No, it could not. Something is present. Something weighs on you. I'm busy, Banishes. Busy means tired, that's all. I've mailed for the fort. The messenger didn't make it. But I'm glad to make his delivery for him. Mail? From who? I don't know. Family? Friends? They seem to come from outside New Eden. Ah. From before. They could be good for morale. Or they could ruin it. Well, thank you. Running this fort on your own can be no easy task. How are things going? Busy. Fadi Miller has been on my case about opening more trading routes. We're all trying to make do, and he's trying to make work. Mind you, it's not a half bad idea. We need the supplies. I've sent letters to the Harrows, but I had no reply. I wish I knew why. 
We had a little disagreement with the governor. You may wait a little longer for your letter. I see. New Eden is losing its selectmen. A terrible thing, of course. Still, new broom sweep cleaner and all that. We'll look into your spectral stains. If you feel the need, then sure. Suit yourself. I do. What do I do for you? Come to me, love. Comfort me. Don't go. All will be well. I promise. All will be well. Helen's desire is so strong, it's constructing a new ghost. These are really very good. Poor Helen. The husk sees what she wants and mirrors it. She feeds him from her own essence. No wonder she's on edge. Well? I'll not waste your time, nor mine. You lied to us about Sebastian's husk. It's still here. We were clear. That is not Sebastian, and its presence will kill you. I... I know that in my mind. But in my heart, it is him. I can see him, hear him, feel his presence. I know him, and he knows me. If he is not real, what is? You feel lost. Of course you do. But there is always another day. You know this to be true. Sebastian is a husk. And without the puppeteer, the husk is paling. It clings to you still because you cling to it. Soon it will pale entirely and become a spectre. This puts you and the others at great risk. He poses no danger. He's... I... Very well. I visit him in the mines. You'll find him there. Take the elevator on the right to the main gallery. There's a tunnel there. You'll need this key. To which you must banish us. And so will I. Go gentle, Helen. Failing that, go hard. the puppeteer, yet Sebastian persists. How? Deprived of the puppeteer, does the husk now feed on Helen's grief? We'll have to get rid of it. And Helen will lose her husband all over again. I hope this time she can let him go. Oh, 
Who oh, there? Sebastian? He's distressed. It is distressed. I am the shadow of the one she loved. And yet I heard the fate. I don't want to hurt her. Please, tell her. I cherished her as I loved. Sebastian, are you saying you want us to lie? They weren't even real memories. Now even his spectre is gone. Something's concealed. Tell Helen. That the spectre of Sebastian lost the fight with his own nature and we had to dispatch him. Or that he vanished, cherishing the life he thought they'd shared. She won't enjoy either. Do we have to lie? Some truths are better left unspoken. And the people here need their leader.
Have you found him? I'm sorry, Helen. We were too late. Sebastian had fully paled. He remembered nothing. Not us, not you. He was a spectre and nothing more. We banished it. What? You did what? The real Sebastian has been gone a very long time. You know this. How could you? He was all I had. My love, my friend, my only friend. I know there's nothing we can say to make things better, but you have our commiserations. If there's anything we can do, just say the word. You've done quite enough already. I'll take a moment to myself, Banishes, if you please. Of course. Take care, Helen. Oh, that was dire. I know, I know, Banisher Rule 14, don't get involved emotionally. I hate that rule. <laughs> then why'd you make it up? Because you needed it. Hunter's roster. And Theodore Shepard is overdue. I remember Shepard. He's probably dead. Scotsman, help me. Did you see it? Did you see the ghost? Aye, I did. All right, maybe I can help. Right, soldier, spill. What's going on exactly? What happened to Nurse Wings? What do you think happened? She died, that's what happened. She died, and now she's trying to take me too. When did you last see Nurse Wings alive? Couldn't say. Time is... tricky. She was here, then she left, then she came back as a ghost. Still holding her bastard in Lancet. Why would she want you dead? She's a ghost. She ain't here for beer and biscuits. He's right, in a way. She is killing him. Your cough is no better. Worse, if anything. Ah, it worsens. When she comes, I sicken. She's a better nurse living, I tell you that. Where does her ghost go, you think? She comes and goes through a locked door. 
And after that, not a clue. Is there a key? Or another way in? Perhaps. This was the blockhouse upon a time. There was a passage out. Through the westernmost tower. I had a key. Search my things in the barracks if they haven't been plundered. Might still be there. Right, well, I'll look into things. You stay here. Where in shite you expect I'll go? You stay here. Go on then, cheeky bastard. So sweet Nurse Wing's kind and caring comes back as a vengeful ghost. It happens, but in this case I doubt it. If she was acting, she did a bloody good job. All right, here we go. All right, we have what we came for. Why would she up and leave like that? And why has she not come back? Maybe she had an accident. She kept records. Maybe she wrote it down. Here's our tower. My thanks. Mr. McCraith, forgive me. I did not see you there. I see you bring company. How lovely. Good day to you, Nurse Wings. My name is Antea Duarte. A pleasure to meet you, Miss Duarte. What brings you to Fort Jericho? I've been here a while now. You just couldn't see me. What do you mean? I can see you just fine. You and I are very much alike, Nurse Wings, don't you think? Are we? How so? I'm a ghost, Nurse Wings. And so are you. Are you sure you're well, Miss Duarte? You sound feverish. Perhaps you need to lie down and rest? I don't rest, Nurse Wings. Sound familiar? She won't be told. We'll have to prove it to her. If you need it, I may still have some vervain. You let me know. Goodbye, Nurse Wings. For now. I'll be here. As ever. Aye. That's the problem. She won't listen. We must find proof.
Poor Nurse Wings is losing her grip. Our denial runs deep and Peabody sickens. She neither sleeps nor eats, but doesn't question it. She gets her sustenance elsewhere now. She writes of a cliff top either way. Oh, cozy wee pub then. Right. Let's go for a walk. Shreds of a memory linger here. There's an echo here, but we need the tie. Locked, all right. Anne's medics remind me of my mother's. The oils and ointments, infusions and concoctions. I bet she knew her business. She treated the men the slavers worked to death in the fields. Though she had little money, she... was very famous. That's what saved her. I think we found her. There's an echo. How long has she been here? No more than a few days. Here's the key to the infirmary. A scale Fogach smile. See no journal. It may have slid from her fingers and fallen. Let's retrieve it. Never learn, do they? Can 
not work this one out. They never learn, do they?
This looks like the place. Let's find the journal. Spectral remains. Proof of a spirit's passage. Shall we? She knew something was wrong. Yet now that she has died, her ghost denies it. Cotton Peabody believes she is pretending. She doesn't seem the pretending type. We should go back to the infirmary. Anne will surely be there. Don't let that specter get to the corpse. Let's get back up. There's an angry spectre nearby. Summon it before it ambushes us. I summon you now! Call on me.
never learn, do they? Watch out! Spectre position! And reminds me of Moore Mackenzie. We hid in her house when we were running from the English. She washed our wounds and sang as we buried the dead. Never stopped smiling. I like her already. They burned the house down with her inside. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe Moore still haunts the ruins, waiting for the next poor wounded soul. Too, Mr. Peabody. And Wings had the grip. She packed up and left so she'd not pass on the infection. Part of her must have known she'd not make it. I... I did not know. I could not have known. How could you indeed, with your head so far up your own behind? She had a cough. Just a cough. I couldn't have known it would kill her. Well, kill her, it did. As you were, Mr. Peabody. See about. Not like I can go anywhere anyways. And now, I lift the curtain. Hold still. Get your filthy hands off me! That's enough, Mr. Peabody. Get off me, you evil old frigate! Thank you. 
In his temper, Cotton Peabody gave Anne Wings the disease that killed her. Oh, still here, are you? What new comedy do you two bring me now? Remember on the clifftop when you closed your eyes and it felt like you slept for a very long time? Have you been spying on me? Remember how when you awoke, you felt lost and distant? How you could not remember who you were? How slowly you came back to yourself? How something drove you to it? Something that felt more important than anything you had ever felt? No. Yes. My patient needed me. I knew it from my head to my heart. That's it. That's why you stayed. That's what keeps you here. My dear, the desire to help my patients means only one thing. It means I'm a nurse. Cotton Peabody's health concerns you greatly. True? I'm a very good nurse. How long is it since last you slept? How long since last you ate? Well, I have been very busy. You're tired but cannot sleep. You're hungry but can't face eating. Time to face the truth. No, it's just... I'm tired. I forget things. I forget to stop working. I think you know what he needs. I think you know his remedy. He must have wintergreen. Fresh oil, decocted, then used as a salve. Yet, though you treat him, his condition worsens. You must have noticed. To maintain the illusion of life, you feed upon his essence. Even as you tend to him, you leech his life away. No. No. Your memory is fading. It is not. At least, I don't think it is. Once you kept meticulous records. Now your notes, if you keep them at all, are chaotic. It's just that I'm all alone. No one to talk with. No one to share a laugh with. I've gone a little potty. Nurse Wings. Anne. You're dead. Just like Antea. You've convinced yourself you're still alive, but... You are not. But if Mr. Peabody withers by my presence, then why does your woman not wither you? I would, but I take my strength from other people. My God! I could never do that! Then the longer you stay to treat your patient, the quicker he will die. No. No! Hold there, nurse wings. Anne! I can help you. Let me help you. She's heading back to where her body lies. Anne, are you there? If I take another step, if I fall, I won't die. No, you won't die. All I wish was to save a soul. Just one soul at a time. God. It's time we put an end to this. The devotion of poor Anne Wings, who even dead, kept on caring. No. Her ghost hungers for essence and calls it caring. You must get well. Tis all I want. But by staying, I've been doing you harm. For that, I beg your forgiveness. Oh, Mr. McBeath? Peabody, we must talk. This sounds ominous. Where lies the problem? 
You're the one who made her sick. The day you spat on Anne Wings, you gave her your disease. I never spat on... No. Wait. I did. She was at me with the lancet. The pain gave me a wee touch of fury just for a moment. I gulped without thinking. <laughs> Could happen to a saint. Which of us is not gobbed without thinking? Unfortunate, though, how it turned out. So, Nurse Wings died trying to heal you. You believe her ghost returns to harm you. Interesting. Well, all good things, they say, come to an end. I'll miss our little chats. Anne Wings, you're a dedicated nurse. All you do, you do with love. But right now, you're a threat to your last patient. He needs me. I just want to help. Does he need you? Do you really want to help? What comedy is this? You've been the dedicated nurse for so long, you're afraid that if you stop, you'll cease to exist. Let it go, Anne. You've done a great job. But the job is done. Cotton Peabody deserves to get well. And only I would treat him. We'll do what we can for him. You've done enough, Anne. You won't be forgotten. All right, then. If you're sure. Thank you. There is nothing left for you here. Is she gone? Am I safe? It's over. Anne Wings is gone for good. Gone for good? Aye. Great. <laughs> In her diary, Nurse Wings said oil of wintergreen could cure Peabody. It would be fitting. We must at least try. Let's get the ingredients.
Vector heading for that court. What is lurking here? Time to work, Banisher. I must admit, I'm not used to going on a flower picking mission. But if it's for Anne, then I'll do it. I could tell. No more winter greens here. Let's look elsewhere. Something's nearby. Where is it?
I'm ready to shoot the infested roots after you bruise the heart. An abandoned chest. I can't really quite see it from here, but I think it has our names on it. There is a path once I clear the way. Worst way to die. What's the best way?
impressive. Huh? 